In this video, we're going to be installing vSphere Application 8.3, which has just been released alongside vSphere 7.0. First thing you need to do, of course, is download the vSphere Application 8.3 ISO, and that is found on the my.vmware.com portal. Once you've done that, simply mount the ISO to your local machine and navigate to the bin directory and just validate that the OVFs are here. And once you've done that, navigate to your vCenter server, which we will be deploying the first appliance to. So we log in here to VCSA1, and this is on our primary site. I'm just going to deploy the OVF like you would with any other OVF. I'm going to use local file, and this is the, uh, the location of the uh, mounted ISO. And here we're going to select all the files with the shift key with the exception of the add-on servers there. And we're going to open that up and go through the OVF template deployment. Now I've already created my A records and pointer records for my uh, vSphere application appliances. Uh, make sure you do that in your DNS uh, servers before you start this step. So we give the virtual machine a name and we just choose a location for it. And there's a host there in my uh, primary data center, data center A. After the validation is complete, we will see uh, some additional settings here. So we just uh, check everything's fine here. And we go through, we're gonna accept the license agreement. And we're just gonna have a small deployment here. So just the two vCPUs. And moving to the wizard for our storage, I'm just going to use thin provisioning for this appliance in my lab. And then I'm going to select uh, this local data store here, although you would want to use a shared data store if, um, if you're going to be uh, doing this in production. Uh, the manager network, I'm just going to put that on my default VM network here for the lab. I'm using a static IP address on version 4. And this is where we set all the settings for the, uh, for the OVF. And with all the uh, settings input there, I'm just going for next. And then the uh, the extension installation is simply going to be uh, the standard provider here. And uh, we're going to go for next. And review all the settings and then finish to complete the deployment. And you can uh, monitor the status here of the OVF package deployment uh, in the recent tasks pane of the vSphere client. So while that's running, I'm just going to install the appliance in site B as well. Now that the OVF appliances for vSphere application have been deployed at both sites, it's time to power them on. So in our primary site A here, a uh, simple case of just right clicking the VM and powering it on. And it's exactly the same for the second site there. Once the appliances have booted up correctly, um, you need to log into them on their port 5480 from a web browser. And then just navigate over to the configuration button here. And uh, what you'll notice uh, is that the VRM service is actually stopped. And what I've found is that if you um, just enter the password here that, and do a save and restart service, then the uh, VRM service will actually start correctly. And you need to do that for both of uh, the appliances that you've deployed as well. 
Once the VRM services have started on both of the appliances, you need to log out of the vSphere client at both sites and log back in. Now after refreshing the browser for the plugin to take effect, if you go to the menu, you'll see the site recovery option. And you'll see that site recovery is enabled and the vSphere application appliance at each site is now available in the UI with a healthy status of OK. And what I'm going to do now is just going to open up site recovery on the, the production site here. I'm just going to re-authenticate. Once we're logged in, we're going to do a new site pair. And we're going to select our first site here as uh, the VCSA01. And we're going to type in VCSA02's details in the box below to pair them up. And we're going to go for next to continue. Yep, we're going to accept the security certificate. And we'll see here the, uh, the VCSA has populated the box. We're going to select that and choose the appliance that we want to um, pair with. We're going to go for next and just review this. This is correct, the correct way around. So the first site is number one, the second site is going to be number two. And we're going to be using Visual application without the Site Recovery Manager in this case. I'm just going to finish there and just wait for this to complete. And once that's finished, I like to just log out and log back in again. And there we can see now we have the VCSA1 paired with VCSA02. And uh, we can now start looking at setting up replication jobs. Now once the VCSA replication servers and sites have been paired up, we can go back to our vCenter server and we can uh, right click one of our VMs that we want to replicate and just go down to all site recovery actions and click configure replication. And from this uh, site recovery window, we can start to set up the, um, the configuration. So we want to target uh, VCSA2 for this particular replication session. Um, we can either auto-assign the replication server or we can manually select it. I'm just going to go to auto-assign because I've only got the one. And then we just go through the wizard. Um, obviously it does a check here to make sure that the VM can be replicated. And then we can choose our, so our storage options here. So. Um, we can simple vision, for example, and then choose a compliant data store uh, at the other site to replicate the data to. And we choose our RPO, so we can go anywhere from five minutes to 24 hours. I'm just going to leave this on the default for an hour. And then we can turn on these point in time instances as well, which uh, basically snapshots the VM so we can revert it back even when we're at DR uh, to point in time uh, recovery instances. I uh, personally don't like to enable to use this solution because um, it does take some time for those VMs to power on if you use it. Uh, prefer to use a, a backup restore in, in those occasions, but it, you can use it here if you do need to. And then we just go to the uh, the end here and we can uh, complete the, uh, the wizard. And a quick refresh of this page will show the replication session being configured with its settings. So we can use the drop down here just to see a bit more information about what's going on. And now that the uh, initial sync is completed, the status shows us OK. And we can perform uh, user actions on this now. So we can sync it up uh, on demand. We can then remove it. We can pause it. And we can run a reconfiguration as well. So you might recall in previous versions of vSphere application that if you wanted to extend the disk of a source VM, there was a series of tasks that you had to go through in order to be able to replicate that change down to DR. And it was incredibly time consuming and prone to human error. With this version of vSphere application, we can actually extend disks on the source VMs and those changes automatically get applied down to DR. So let's have a quick look at that now while we're here. So this Linux VM is uh, quite small in size, it's only one, uh, it's only one gigabyte. Uh, so we're just going to 
change that up to two and apply that. And that configuration has been completed. And you'll notice that there's no errors here being uh, being brought up as there would have been in the um, old version of vSphere application. So I just want to prove this to you. So we're going to power that on. So what I've done here is I've just logged into the uh, the DR um, site here, the site recovery for DR, and uh, I'm just going to click that incoming replication session, and uh, I'm just going to recover it to show you that the disk has actually been changed without us doing anything. Uh, so we're not going to synchronize any changes. I'm just going to use the latest available data, and uh, there's no need to power it on. I'll just leave it powered off. Okay, and we'll just log back into the uh, the vCenter server here, and we'll wait for that to VM to be recovered. All right, and we can see it here. So if we just go to the uh, summary for that virtual machine, and open up the hardware, we can see that the disk is indeed two gigabytes, uh, and uh, that really proves that the whole uh, issue of resizing disks in the past which has been there for so long has now been solved. So that concludes the video today. I hope it was useful and thanks for watching.